Like I'd give a lot of my money away and and be quick to help other people at the cost of our own living expenses yeah. type of situation. Hi guys, welcome back to another money discussion with Skilled Finances. My name is Lindy and this is Tando. If you're joining us for the first time, we're so excited to have you here with us. If you're not following us on our socials, make sure you do so. That's at Skilled Finances. And for all those of you that love listening to podcasts, whether you're in that drive into work or after work and you love a good podcast, make sure you're following us on podcast platforms. That's also at Skilled Finances. Now, one thing that we always say is that money can make or break a relationship. Right. And money is one of the leading causes of divorce and separation. That is not a secret. Um, But one thing that we always say is that it's not necessarily the money itself, uh, but it's the money habits. And it's really in that couples may fail to learn about how they can work together as a team with money. And we always encourage couples to talk about money. Now, what we're going to do today is really kind of dive deeper into the kinds of conversations that you can have. But specifically, one conversation that you can have is about money habits. So what we're going to talk about is just using our own personal example or examples of our money habits that we brought into the relationship that we had to address, that we had to discuss and change and talk about. And hopefully, as we share our journey with you and share the kinds of conversations that we had about our personal money habits, which were negatively impacting our relationship at the time and how we were able to turn things around and find a way to work together. Hopefully, this gives you some insights into the kind of conversations that you and your partner could have together as well. And also just understand that there is so much to talk about when it comes to money or couples finances and this is just one aspect but we genuinely believe if you can truly understand your own money habits and your partner's money habits and then speak together about how you can then um, work together with your different habits that would honestly honestly propel your relationship with money and together in an amazing way and it will help you to find ways to work as a team when it comes to finances so let's jump into it what would you say is one money habit that you came into the into our marriage with that um, caused a bit of friction initially and you had to think about doing things a little bit differently yeah so I think for me and for those of you that have watched our previous videos or listened to our previous podcast you've probably heard me talk about the fact that I came from a single parent household so it was just my mom and me and my brother so it was the three of us and it wasn't always easy sometimes it was tough like money didn't always come easy at times it was tough and it was hard to get it so I think that then made me become the type of person that was like well I'm not easily willing to give money and I'm not easily willing to invest and stuff I want to save 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 to make sure that in the future I've always got that nest egg to fall back on you know I don't I don't like being in times where you've not got money and you can't afford things I want to be able to afford what I want when I want it so Mm. no I'm not giving and no I'm not investing because I see investing as a thing where you can lose money and it's too Mm. risky for me so that was a habit that I came into our marriage with Mm. and it's one that caused a bit of tension didn't it it did. I'd say it did because, I mean, you use the word save. I kind of think of the word hoard. Yeah. Because <laughs> it was literally money just hoarder. like, no, no, we're not, we're not spending that or we're not doing that without money. Let's just leave it sat there in a bank account. So I can look at it and know that it's there. Exactly. Yeah. And obviously this, this caused some friction because, you know, I'm the kind of person that I'm like, you know, I like to give money. I like to help other people, but also I'm, I like to put my money into investments because I understood at the time that, um, uh, money money in the bank is really just not doing anything right. it's not the best strategy from a financial perspective because of, of inflation and various other reasons but you didn't really care about any of that you were no. just like no I'm not I'm not I'm not letting my money out of my sight yeah I think I was still <laughs> holding on to the childhood the childhood struggles and things exactly. like that so those were then like my driving and Mm. the push for me to then just save the money. Mm. But it's a good thing that we spoke about it. We butted heads over it quite a bit, Mm. but then eventually we spoke about it. And then I started to see that actually there's nothing wrong with giving. So to be fair, the only money I did give was my tithe in church and my offering. And that was it. That's about it. When you came to giving, that's those were the lengths I was willing to go to. And that's it. But I started to realize like, 
actually, there's so much power in investing. There's so much power in giving. There's so much power in not just holding on to everything. Yes, I can have my emergency fund and I can have my sinking funds, but live a little, give. And I think now I've become that, I've I've switched a bit because I've become the type of person that's big on giving. And I'm actually the type of person that's now big on investing as well. So it took a few lessons from you on the investing part and talking mm-hmm. to you, but on the giving side, I realized how powerful it is to give. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, now this might sound contrary to what we've just said but one of my money habits that I had to address should I say uh is giving so I was on the opposite scale I was the kind of person that would give my money all the time and um there is a healthy level you know there's benefits as I mentioned to giving but equally speaking you know I'll be honest I was really kind of overdoing it like I'd give a lot of my money away and and be quick to help other people at the cost of our own living expenses yeah. type of situation and, and easily be like, yeah, I can help you out. You need some money. Cool. I'll transfer it to you. And yeah, I myself need that money for something else. So that's one area that, you know, I had to really change. And again, it comes back to upbringing. As yeah. you've said, you know, I grew up in a household where um, I saw my parents being givers and being willing to do for others and kind of doing that consistently. And that kind of gave me that mindset, but it kind of gave me the mindset of doing it even at my own expense. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that, this was something that in, I was happy to do, should I say, when I was by myself. But now that I had you in my life and we're now living together and I was making that kind of decisions, obviously you would yeah. feel some kind of way about it because you're like, wait, why did you just agree to give this person this money when you know we need it for this <laughs> yeah. sort of thing? So I think that's where the friction started to come in. And, and, and I started to, it, it didn't click straight away, but eventually I started to be like, actually, yeah, no, I get what you're saying. Yeah, I, I feel like you were the, because giving is a good thing. It's nice to help people mm. and it's good to help people because you, you start to realize that at times someone needs it more than you do. But mm. it doesn't mean you don't need it as well. Exactly. So exactly. I think that's where we had to sort of find a balance because you you were you were very generous and you still are like quite generous. But I think you've now found like a healthy balance for giving and being generous and stuff. So yeah. Yeah. So that's one habit that I had to curb uh, on the giving side. Uh, what's another one from you? So one of mine was just before we got married. So I was at uni for like three years and. Like when you're at uni, sometimes life life can be tough. So it's a bit of struggle life at times because I wasn't working whilst I was at uni. So I was just having to make ends meet with like the student finance that I got. So I tried to literally plan ahead, make sure everything was organized. I've got money for the month and stuff. And because I did that, at times it meant that I couldn't afford certain things. So I always used to go for like the cheaper like options of things. Sure. Not always as the smart price, but sometimes as the smart price to make ends meet and make sure that I was fine and my bills were paid and I was okay. So now when we then got married and I was no longer at university, I struggled to drop that habit. Mm. And fair enough, it wasn't a, a case of drop it fully and now start buying things that are completely expensive and now start shopping at the places that are so expensive. But no, it was, no, you can drop the habit because you you've now got, some more money coming in right but then at the same time it's not just about what you want and the cheap things and always getting the low price things and it was yeah it was a struggle and I noticed it in our food shops yeah. when we'd go food yeah. shopping because I'd have the list ready like we we're only buying these <laughs> things on the list and then you'd come in like I want this thing and then and that thing and that thing I'd be like no I want this no and no but because of the batting heads that we did, I started to realize that I, I had like a very, what you call it, a scarce mindset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where it was just more like, yeah, let's just buy the cheap things. At least we'll save money. We've got it, but we'll still save a lot on the side. So I think mine went hand in hand, like the first habit and this one, they went very much hand in hand. But it's taken time for me to come out of that you don't always need to be buying the cheapest, cheapest, cheapest thing. Sometimes, yes, treat yourself and buy something that's of a better value and stuff like that. So that was definitely... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, I had to, I had to show you, I had to show you the other side. Obviously, like you said, there's, there's, there's levels to this at the end of the day. There's always going to be something that's a little bit more expensive than the thing that you're buying, if you're being completely honest. But I kind of had to say, listen, I, I understand your, your desire to save money. I get it. But, like 
it would literally, literally, it would come down to be like, no, I don't want to buy this thing over here. I'd rather go and buy it in that shop over there because it's two pounds cheaper. And I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> like, but we have to drive to that other shop. It's probably two park pounds there, that we're using. And then buy it all for the sake of saving two pounds. Like it's literally right in front of our face here right now. And let's just buy it here and go home. Why the extra next of like, oh, we'll shop here for this and then we'll go to that shop for there. And then we'll go to that shop all in the purpose of like being like, we need to find the cheapest yeah. deal. And I think there's a time and a place for that. I'm not knocking that, right? Yeah. There's a time and a place for that. But like, sometimes it's, it's just like, listen, this is, what we, this is what's in front of us right now. Let's just buy this thing that's here. Um, but equally speaking, you know, I think there's, I think there's certain things in life that you feel the cheapness of, if I can say that. Yeah. Like, you buy something cheap, fair enough, you save the cost of, purchase in the moment but then you'll find yourself buying it again three months later because it's broken or damaged or it doesn't work as well I've as when you initially bought it of one. something that that's probably to a lot of people is like yeah it's just a thing but ketchup like you, <laughs> you can always tell the difference with ketchup right when you buy that cheap there's oh, brands yeah. that are really really cheap and you're like what is this like what am i eating and then there's brands where it's not your heinz right but it's still like a decent enough brand where you're like yeah hey, good ketchup yeah, and pretty, then you've got your hind so it's like yeah. yeah 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 exactly and and that's exactly i think that's that's how i started to yeah <laughs> to kind of show you that okay i hear what you're saying about money but life is more than just saving money right yeah. like you're not put on this earth to just cut costs you kind of have to also enjoy yourself and sometimes that may mean just spending, spending a money. little bit more money yeah. than you're used to so yeah we worked on that though and you know that's and and to be fair it's not like you're no longer that kind of person. You're still the kind of person who loves looking for deals and loves looking for uh, ways to save money and stuff. So that's still there. Yeah. It's just that um, it's not always switched on, even in the smallest of things. Like, no, that's, you know, like you say, ketchup. Ke this ketchup over here is 49p, um, but I know a place where they sell it for 34p. <laughs> yeah. It's like, really? Like, <laughs> honestly, it's couple of pennies let's just buy this one so 100 percent um uh mine is actually that i didn't really spend a lot of money on fun i'd yeah. say or like spend money at all in fact like i was very serious i'd say about like thinking about money and financial planning like always being like save or invest or uh or give funny enough but like rarely did i say to myself like Yo, let's enjoy this money. Yeah. Um, true. and even though you're the saver, I think you still had an element of of spending. Yeah. Your money, like you, you knew that. Okay, I want new hair. I want new my nails done. Yeah. My, my nails done. I want to. Oh, I've seen this lovely dress online that I want to buy. Like for me, I just never really gave myself that room to enjoy my money, which would be okay if I guess you could argue it'd be okay, but it'd be okay if it was just me. But then what? Ten, what then ended up happening would be. Like it will cross friction between us, yeah. Because then I would be seeing you spending your your uh, I guess spending your money, but spending money as like a a waste of money, and I'd be like, "But baby, like you're always spending money. You like we need to we need to do this. We need to do this. We need yeah. to do this." Or like I would then make financial decisions for the both of us, which would deprive any spending yeah. type of thing. And so I think yeah, that's one thing I had to really address, and you had to then confront me and say like yo bro it's okay to spend money you know <laughs> yeah definitely I think one of the things that I've realized like here in the UK we work a lot and it may be the same where you are but we work a lot like you're literally at work nine to five Monday to Friday and then you, for those that work full-time and for some it's more than that and then you then add on those that are working full-time and then running businesses and then those that also pay. it's a lot that people are doing I always saw it then as if I work this hard, I should then be able to treat myself. I'm not working myself to an early grave and I'm not working myself to a point where guaranteed if I was to go tomorrow, like God forbid, if I was to go tomorrow, someone else is enjoying my money on my behalf, which I could have enjoyed myself. I'd like to think I'd be up there in heaven like, yo, like this person's really enjoying my money and I couldn't even do that for myself. So I think that's how I start to look at it. Like, yes, there is a time and a place for fun. And that's how we started including like a spending allowance sure. into our budget because sure. we're like, no, 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 no. 
we can't work this hard and be tired and not even get to enjoy it. That's why we always say that it's important to find a balance. Have your spending money, have your saving money, have your investing money, but find that balance. Don't work yourself to a point where you can't even enjoy yeah. that money that you're making. You need to enjoy it as well. Live live life. 100%. So hopefully what we've shared with you today has given you some insights into the way that the money conversation happens, especially when it comes to habits, and also just kind of how you can, uh, or, or sorry, highlight the fact that you will have different habits and highlight the fact that it's inevitable that you are two different people and you will disagree on certain things. But remember, the aim is to work together as a team. And sometimes that means changing your own habits. Mm. And sometimes that means your partner changes their habits. And sometimes that means you both create a new habit together. Whichever way it works uh, for the both of you is basically what matters. And what we're simply encouraging here is that the money conversation as a couple is a never ending conversation. Right. It's an ongoing conversation. And habits is one of the reasons why that is the case. So just start with one habit that you can both maybe look at. Maybe it's the budgeting that we've spoken about, or maybe it's the spe- the different spending habits that you both have. And just kind of discuss that, figure out, okay, why is it that you do it this way? And why mm-hmm. is it that I do it this way? And what do you think could work for the both of us moving forward? And just start that conversation. So hopefully we've inspired you to have that conversation. If you're watching this on YouTube, let us know in the comments uh, your thoughts on that, how you and your partner are going to manage your different money habits or any money habits that you've worked together to build and put in place if you're listening to this on podcast would love for you to leave a review for us on apple podcast uh, we'll be super super grateful for you for doing that we can't wait to see you soon and it has been so much fun to have this conversation with you catch you soon